Today we are looking at the gear that I personally use and ride with on the daily on my motorcycles and all the giveaway bikes. This question has come up because I've made a couple of videos about gear and I saw on Instagram and through the YouTube comments people ask me, well Yemi, what do you recommend? What do you ride with? So today we are looking at that. We're gonna go top down starting with our helmets, going all the way down to our boots, showing you guys everything that I personally use when I'm on my motorcycle. Now, a very important point I wanna make before this video starts. I don't have a paid sponsor relation with any of the companies that I'm talking about today, whether it's Arai, Revit, Alpine Stars. I literally have never received any source of money from any of these companies to talk about their products in a sponsored way. Some of the items you're gonna see today I did receive for free and I will talk to you about those items and I will point them out, but everything else I purchased with my own money, did my own research and used because I really trust it. So, helmets, I'm exclusively an Arai guy. I uh, have trusted Arai helmets with my life since about 2016. I had a really bad street accident in 2017, about seven years ago now, that Arai saved my life with and I've crashed on track more times than I care to count and Arai has always been there with my back, holding my head nice and safe in their embrace. I think that they're the class leader. Arai has developed some amazing technologies. They've been around since the 50s. I have nothing but good things to say about Arai. So that's why exclusively I wear Arai. So over here is the Haga Corsair X limited edition winter test version of his helmet. Uh, Noriyuko Haga was a superbike racer back in the mid 2000s, most famously on a Ducati. And uh, this winter test edition helmet was given to me by Arai North America. I actually met up with one of their reps at the Revzilla event uh, in 2021 at the Get On Moto Fest, told them my story about my crash. They liked what they heard and they were like, hey, Here's a, here's a Haga limited edition Corsair X for you. So this one I did receive for free and it's one of my favorite helmets. This is the helmet I use for all of the street sport bikes that you see me riding. So on the S1000 RR, any kind of naked bike, anything that is a little more sporty, I will almost always rock the Haga Corsair X. I think this livery is super sick. I love the winter test edition and uh, you can see the cool little samurai back there. Uh, it's a very, very cool logo. So we also have here the Arai XD4. This is their touring helmet. This is the helmet that I use most exclusively on my desert sled when I'm out doing my own personal rides. I'm not filming for content because believe it or not, I do a lot of riding that I don't film. Um, I just think that I have to maintain that sense and love of motorcycling that isn't always about content. So this is the helmet that I use. It's got a Cardo Pack Talk Edge attached to it. You can see the microphone attached to it because I still do film a little bit with this helmet, but this is my do anything, go anywhere touring slash long distance helmet. You got the little sunscreen here. It's uh, more of a dual sport look and it just matches the vibe of my Scrambler a little bit better than this one. But I have ridden on the Scrambler plenty of times with the Haga. And over here we have have probably my favorite helmet of all time. Uh, I have purchased this helmet. I bought this helmet with my own money. This is the Arai Corsair X Isle of Man limited edition from the 2021 year. This helmet is amazing. It's the same model as this Corsair X over here. It's one year older. So this is a 2022 if I remember correctly. And this is a 2021. So uh, the Isle of Man is a little near and dear to my heart because I just think that it's the most amazing motorcycle event in the world. The fact that it even exists is just incredible. And this livery for this Corsair X is one of the coolest in my opinion. So a few years back I splurged and I got this one. This is my exclusive track day helmet. So I only use this on the track. It's my purest helmet. Um, there's nothing attached to it. There's no cardos, there's no microphones. I do have one small GoPro attachment on it just because I do like to film my track days from time to time, my racing from time to time. And this is just a really amazing helmet. I think the livery is super cool. It's got the uh, Isle of Man actual course outline right here. The design is just amazing. And uh, yeah, I used to have a small Isle of Man brake res cover on my very first Daytona that some longtime viewers might remember. And so I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for the Isle of Man. And so this is my track day lid. Let's look over some accessories I use for my helmet and then let's keep it moving to my jackets, my gloves, my pants, and my boots. Folks, we are wrapping up our BMW S1000 Double R giveaway. Head over to yamenube.co and get yourself 20X entries because this sweepstakes is ending on March 29th. You only have a limited time to get your entries in. You cannot get entered to win this bike after March 29th. April 10th is gonna be our winner selection date. So keep your eyes peeled on your email box to see if you're gonna win an S1000 RR from yours truly. Head over to Yamini Beck Hill, get yourself 20X entries until March 29th. Don't miss it. So a few accessories I cannot live without in terms of my head and my protection 
are my ear protection. I use just these cheap foamy ear protectors from Amazon. I have tons and tons of these boxes hanging around everywhere. I wear earplugs every single time I ride and I highly recommend you do so as well because wind damage can cause tinnitus and cause hearing damage over the long term. I also keep a bottle of helmet and visor goggle cleaner uh, pretty handy near my helmets. It doesn't have to be this mock off one. You can use anything you want. For years, I've just used isopropyl alcohol and other solvents and anything that can just clean your visor because you're gonna wanna make sure your visor is clean regularly because seeing out of your motorcycle helmet is obviously very important. So I just pair it with a little microfiber towel and we're good to go. The last accessory I use pretty regularly is a neck gaiter. I have this Cardo one that's just been hanging around for years and uh, I just put it on, it sits right here on your neck. It creates a nice little space between your helmet and your neck. And um, it's nice for reducing the sound uh, when you're actually recording moto vlogs and other content on the motorcycle, but also just serves a really great purpose to reduce wind buffeting and wind feeling on the neck and just a really nice thing to have in general. Moving on to jackets, let's talk about the newest bit of kit that I've picked up in the last six to eight months or so. And it's this Alpine Stars Tech Air 5 vest. Now I've been using this airbag vest for about eight months or so. And I haven't really talked about it in videos because I just felt like it wasn't really enough to warrant an entire video. And I'm not the type to be sanctimonious about safety equipment. I think you guys should wear the level of safety equipment you feel most comfortable with. Everyone understands best practice is to be at GAT, which is all the gear all the time. But I wasn't gonna make a whole airbag video being like, you should wear one. I wear one because I think it's a great idea. So this Tech Air 5 sits underneath my jackets. It's a very nice stealth system. It features a back protector, but I still have a back protector in my other jackets as well because I don't wanna mess around with the spinal injury. And it's really cool, man. You just zip it up and the thing just turns on and works. It has a whole like really advanced algorithmic system that senses uh, high degrees of movement and those sort of things. So when I've been out riding, it has never just randomly puffed up or maybe protected or whatever. Uh, it seems to work very, very well uh, in the event that it hasn't popped up yet. I haven't crash tested it and I don't intend on doing so, but this kind of extra layer of protection and safety uh, has really been invaluable to me. I feel a lot safer knowing that some of my internal giblets are being protected by an airbag vest. So are my spine and other uh, critical parts of my body. So Alpine Stars Tech Air 5 vest, I've been a big fan of that one. Moving on, this is the Revit Hyperspeed Air 2. This is a jacket that was not given to me by Revit. I believe I purchased this one because we used to sell Revit on our store and I did get it for dealer cost. So I guess you could call that a sponsorship, but not really. But anyways, the Hyperspeed Pro is kind of a mid-level jacket for them. It's not their top of the line, but this is leather perforated, highly protective, highly abrasion resistant, padded all throughout. Um, triple, double, crazy stitched everywhere. This is a super high quality jacket that I really love to use when I'm riding stuff like the S1000RR, any kind of naked bike. I think this one has a right cut for sporty street riding. Uh, this pairs really, really nicely with my Haga helmet. It looks really great. It's got the same white, black, and red kind of colorway to it. And I think it's just a really cool look. And I really love the Hyperspeed for the everyday squidding type of thing. In the summer, it is a teensy bit hot, but I really like the extra protection of the leather. Uh, I used to wear textile jackets in the summer pretty exclusively here in Texas, but I've since allowed myself to be a little bit more uncomfortable and just be a whole lot more protected after I've looked up how much better leather is over textile in protecting. Um, so I feel really, really confident in this jacket. The other jacket I use is this Revit Off Track 2 H2O. This is my kind of do anything, go anywhere jacket. The reason is, is because this jacket is incredibly flexible. You can pair this with a base layer, which I actually have over here. Uh, this is a nice base layer that you put underneath this jacket. And I've ridden this thing in the Himalayas, in California, in all kinds of places, in all kinds of weather, all the way up from, you know, 100 degrees down to like 30 to 40 degrees, and it's done tremendously well. It has all kinds of zippers and abilities to open and be a little bit more, you know, flexible with the airflow. That's a really big thing for me for an all weather kind of jacket. I think this jacket pairs really well with uh, my Scrambler. It looks really cool when you're going out the road, it looks a little bit more adventurous. And again, you can unzip it. It's super breezy, super airflow. But then if you wanna stay warm, you just zip everything up, put the base layer, and it works really well. Um, it also comes with a 
rain jacket that you can toss over it as well. So honestly, this jacket is my Swiss army knife, do anything, go anywhere jacket. And when I'm not riding a super sporty motorcycle, you will probably catch me wearing this jacket. For gloves, I keep it pretty simple. I have three different gloves that I use depending on how hot or how wet or how cold it is. The first one is this pair of Revit metric gloves. And again, these I bought from our store because I was able to get a good deal on them because we were a distributor and seller for Revit. Uh, so that's why you see a lot of Revit stuff because I got a good deal on it, but I still paid for it myself. These are the metric gloves. They are super nice. They're a nice sporty kind of glove. They have really good feel through the palm, which is something I really look for in a glove. They have really nice protection on the knuckles, on the palm over here, reinforced leather all throughout, CE rated, of course. We're not wearing some cheapo gloves that aren't gonna protect over here. It has the technology thumb and pointer finger, if I remember correctly. Um, it seems to work perfectly fine with my cell phone, which is really nice. And um, yeah, triple and four stitching all throughout. And I'm not a huge fan of the huge gauntlet style gloves for the streets. I understand that they are obviously much safer. They're more sturdy and all that stuff. I leave that stuff typically to the track. I have a nice beefy pair of track gloves, but we're talking about street stuff today. These next gloves are kind of my like wet weather slash slightly inclement weather gloves. I'll wear these from between like 50 to 70 degrees or so. Um, they're a little bit padded. They're a little bit warmer. These are the Revit Hydra 2 H2O. Uh, they're waterproof, which is really nice. They cinch up really nice. So if it's a little bit colder, I will typically wear these gloves. They still have really good feel through the palms, not quite as much impact protection for the palm over here, but I like to believe that if I'm riding in inclement weather, I'm probably riding way safer and way more chill, and it's a little okay for me because I want that feel through the palm and the ability to control my inputs. The last pair of gloves I have, I hardly ever use, but I like having them just in case. I've brought them on a couple of trips um, that I was gonna ride in much, much colder weather. These are the Revit Lava Gloves. Um, as the name implies, they are incredibly warm. They actually have a whole like puffy layer inside of the glove here. These look like, you know, snowmobile gloves uh, because they pretty much are. Um, so these are also waterproof. They have a Hydrotex liner. Um, these are amazing to use if it's very cold, very wet, very crappy, and you happen to be riding a bike. Uh, I brought these to the Himalayas, didn't need to use them, which was nice. It wasn't that cold, but uh, if it had been maybe 10 degrees colder, I might have busted these out because these are like my kind of just, you want, you want warm hands, you are going to use the lava gloves, absolutely. Okay, for pants, I pretty much exclusively wear these Revit Jackson 2 jeans. I talked about these in the NBT pants video. They're CE rated, reinforced stitching, have CE approved armor for the knees. Uh, they're rated up to the A level for abrasion. Uh, really reasonably priced at 219. I really, really dig these pants. They work great off the bike too. You don't look like some crazy Power Ranger with them. They're a very good and very flexible jean that you can wear for a lot of different riding. I've worn these in 100 degree weather and I've worn them all the way down to 40 degree weather with a base layer underneath and they work just fine. When it's really cold on your motorcycle, you wanna make sure your core is nice and hot. It's not as big of a deal if your legs are cold. It's not great, but it's not a big deal. So I've never found the need to wear any other pair of pants, really. Uh, I used to have a pair of bigger adventure style pants that I would wear, but I found them to be really bulky and really not that comfortable and didn't provide me as much movement if I was standing up on the bike and riding through gravel and doing that sort of thing. So these pants, I wear them for the street sport stuff. I wear them for the adventure style stuff. I wore these in the Himalayas. I wear them on press events. I literally, wear, I probably am in these pants more than I'm in any other pants throughout my week. Um, these are my tried and true pants. And to be honest, they probably need a wash because I wear them so often, but I try to not do that because I don't want the dye to run out. But these are also Revit as well. And uh, they're a bit of a skinnier fit, which I think looks cool with the rest of my gear and my boots as well, which a lot of you already know what boot I'm gonna talk about if you're fans of the channel. All right, last but certainly not least, a pair of boots that I absolutely adore. I've been wearing these for years. I've probably had like five different pairs because uh, I literally wear these every single time I ride. These are the SMX5 boots from Alpine Stars. What a killer boot, guys. Honest to God, this is, in my opinion, the best boot you can get for your motorcycle ride. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, it's incredibly protective. You can use this boot to go out for a casual ride. It's not super uncomfortable to where you won't wanna be riding in it or wearing in it for very long. I've been in these boots for eight plus hours and it's totally fine. They have lots of flexibility and so you can wear them pretty easily. 
And the second thing is they're incredibly safe. You have tons of reinforced protection for the ankle, the calves. Look at this big beefy pad right here. You have proper zip up and Velcro here. You're not gonna have laces flying around everywhere. You can even use these for light scrambling and adventure riding. I've done that plenty with these boots. Um, you can use them for a track day if you want. These are very similar to a pair of track day boots that I have. They're gonna be plenty fine enough for a track day. And honestly, I just think you should just get a pair of SMX fives for your boots. You can do anything with these. As I said, I've had a pair of these boots on and off my bike for the last six years. I just think that they're incredible. They're so flexible, so versatile. If you see any footage of me riding, I'm probably wearing the SMX fives because I don't think I've worn anything else for my boots ever while I'm riding. I don't have any other pair of boots that I wear and I exclusively wear them. And that's another point I wanted to make is people often ask me, oh yeah, I'm like, how much gear do you wear? I typically wear all of this gear when I go ride. I am pretty firmly at GAT. It is pretty rare for me to go out and ride without wearing helmet, jacket, gloves, boots, and pants. Uh, there have maybe been a couple of times where I'm like going out to just test something I just fixed on a bike around the block and I'll just chuck a helmet on because I'm literally just gonna go around the block of where I live. But pretty often I am wearing all of my gear. So guys, that's what I ride and trust. This is the gear that I've chosen and bought. If you wanna support the channel, go and check out the links below and you can get your gear for yourself. Let me know what gear you like to wear and if you agree with any of my choices. If you disagree with anything I said in this video, please drop a comment down below. Uh, I think I'm a relatively experienced rider and riding in a pretty right way, wearing the right stuff. You can always spec in more protection if you want or less protection than you want. As I mentioned in the video today, safety is ultimately up to you and what you are comfortable with. If you wanna go out there and wear no helmet, no anything else, that ultimately is your prerogative, but I think we can all agree that's kind of a bad idea. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Oh, I love being here inside of the warm embryonic fluid of Valentino Rossi. Me and him just sharing foods together. Maybe he's gonna eat some pizza or some pasta here in the hills of Tavulia. But you know where else it's nice and warm and cozy is this next episode of Yammy Noob you can click on right over here. I'd love for you to watch it. But anyways, I'm gonna stay here hanging out. Me and him might go onto the track later, but I'll catch you guys later.